basically what this talk is about is password hashing and password storage in PHP. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into the content since this is a short talk. The question is, why do we want to hash passwords? Um, think of your users. Respect them. How would you like it if your passwords on all your sites were compromised and someone stole your password? Um, it's the responsible thing to do to the point that um, it actually can be considered negligent to either store plain text passwords or to um, hash them using MD5 or any basic techniques. How many people here know about password storage at all? Okay. Um, how many of you use MD5? Okay. How many of you use SHA-1, SHA-256, SHA-512? Any decrypt users? Yay! So it's also the diligent thing to do, and again, as I said, not doing it can be negligent, and in certain cases can actually expose you to significant legal liability at a personal level. Um, especially if you're hired as a professional developer, you're expected to do at least the baseline, and it can be considered actually legally negligent if you don't. So before we start talking about how to hash passwords, we should talk about the couple of attack vectors there are against them. Uh, most of you have heard of rainbow tables, I'm assuming. Um, basically what that is, is the time-space trade-off. So we pre-compute a list of hashes, a sequence of hashes, and then we store them so that way we can just look up later. We don't have to pre-compute all the hashes again. We just look up to see if that hash is in the table. That's not really how uh, rainbow tables work. That's just a lookup table. For the purposes of this talk, we don't really need to get into it, but I would highly suggest looking up rainbow tables on like Wikipedia. They're actually fairly complex and actually really efficient, really interesting how they work. So you pre-compute them. Um, it uses a chain of hashes. So a rainbow table, like I said, is not a lookup table, but basically you hash and then you reduce. The reduction takes the last hash and creates another thing that looks like a password out of it. And then you do that a whole bunch of times and then you store the output of that chain. So you store the first input and the final output. So when you go to crack a password, you hash it up to the maximum chain size and if you ever have a match with the last one on the chains, that password's guaranteed to be somewhere in that chain. So then you just replay the chain until you get to the password. The benefit of it is it's very, very, very fast. MD5 has an input space of 128 bits, which means there's a ridiculous number of them possible. Um, and to brute force or to iterate through all of them is actually really, really, really slow. But the rainbow table can actually be incredibly fast. Um, typically on the scale of seconds, it depends on your chain size. The longer the chain size, the more space efficient it is, but the slower it is to execute. Um, to defend against it, and this is the common defense that everybody knows, you add assault. Because assault basically prevents the pre-computation from working because you don't know that salt ahead of time. So if you wanted to generate a rainbow table, you'd have to generate a separate rainbow table for every hash. The other main attack vector are brute forcing. Um, it's supposedly time inefficient. So you have to iterate through every possible password for each password you're trying to crack. But it's a lot faster than you would think. And when I say a lot faster, I'm talking ridiculously faster than you would think. On a CPU, I can do about 35, 33 million MD5s per second. So that means on this machine, on this laptop, I could do about 33 million guesses on a brute force per second. For SHA-256, I can do about 20 million. Now, the interesting thing comes in with Bcrypt, I can do about 90 per second. And that's one of the reasons why we recommend Bcrypt over just a simple plain hash. Because it's artificially slower, but that artificially slower means it's resistant to brute force attacks. Now, for $1,600 worth of hardware, you can get a series of four GPUs that can do 15 billion MD5s per second. 11 billion SHA-256s per second. Now, if you notice, I did not include a line for Bcrypt. That's because Bcrypt runs very inefficiently on a GPU. The reason for that is SHA-256 uses 256 bytes of state, which means a GPU has enough cache memory for each thread lane to be able to do one SHA-256 per thread. Bcrypt uses 32 kilobytes 
of internal memory per chain. So each thread can't use that much. So most you should be able to do is one per thread core, which on a GPU there's about three, GPU, three thread cores per GPU. So bcrypt is actually very inefficient with a GPU. It's faster to use it with CPUs. Now, I include a line item for $1,500 a month on EC2 or Amazon Cloud. You could do about 205 million shot 56s per second. So if you notice, it's better, cheaper in the long run to buy a quad GPU system if you want to hack shot 56. The reason is um, the EC2 instances, they use NVIDIA um, GPUs, and NVIDIA does not do integer math as well as ATI. ATI is about four orders of magnitude faster at integer math than NVIDIA is. Now some of NVIDIA's newer stuff is actually better at it, but for now, um, GPUs are the way to go if you want to crack shot the V6. But for bcrypt, because we can do a lot of parallel processing, we can do somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,200 bcrypts per second. So EC2 is actually a fairly effective way of attacking bcrypt, but as you notice, it's not cheap. So to put that in, oh, sorry. So to put that in perspective, for MD5, when I say all six, when I say all six character passwords, what I mean is six character passwords with uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and every symbol typable directly on a keyboard. So there's 94 characters possible. MD5, on a CPU, I can crack every possible six character password in about five seconds, or five hours. On a GPU, 45 seconds. For seven character passwords, it's a little bit worse, 22 days on a CPU, but an hour and a quarter on a GPU. The entire English language, and when I say all cases, what I mean is, so if you had A and D, the word and, lowercase A and D, capital A and, or ND, lowercase ND, capital A, capital N, lowercase D, so basically all possible case permutations, about a tenth of a second on a CPU. And about a three, ten thousandths of a second on a GPU. Just trying to give you an idea of a perspective of when I talk about uh, password hashing and talk about brute forcing, how realistic brute forcing is um, of an attack vector. So strong passwords, because six character, seven character, it's common knowledge to use a long password. <laughs> if you looked at um, XKCD, they did an article about strong passwords. Correct course battery statement is what their recommendation was. Based on my calculations, it comes out to about 80 years to crack that in MD5 on a CPU. And note that I'm saying, um, when I say MD5, I mean salted MD5. On a GPU, I can crack in about 64 days. All 10 character passwords, and when I say 10 character, I mean random 10 character passwords. 51,000 years, and on a GPU, 113 years. 26 character passwords, four times 10 to the 33rd years, which is three followed by all those zeros times the age of the universe. So it's a really, 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 really long time. I personally use 64 character passwords, but sorry for another day. So, oh, that's not good. That was supposed to appear like the others. So brute forcing bcrypt, just to give you an idea of the scale difference, 243 years to crack six character passwords. Compare that with um, MD5 for five hours. So a six character password that's not a dictionary password is actually very secure under bcrypt, even though it's very insecure under MD5. And the entire English language is 20 minutes on EC2. I'm not suggesting you use a six character password, but if you're storing it with bcrypt, it actually is fairly unlikely that it'll be cracked. And that's why we want to use bcrypt, not because people are going to be using secure passwords, because if you use a 26 character random password, it's not going to get cracked either way. But you're protecting your users who are using weaker passwords. Are you using PASSW0RD? you're actually fairly secure. It's actually easier, to, harder to brute force. 
Now, one note here is when I say random, um, what I mean is actually computer generated random. The way we humans generate randomness is actually fairly predictable. And if you've ever used a password site, um, US government, that um, has a format to the password, the first character must be a number, the second character must be a symbol, the third character must be this, the eleventh character must be an uppercase. That drastically reduces the search space to the point where we can reduce something that may have taken years down to mere minutes, even though it's a long password. So let's talk quickly about hashing pet algorithms. Very bad algorithms or anything that just uses a raw password. So I'm sure you've all heard MD5 is broken. MD5 is not broken for password storage. MD5 for password storage, MD5 has the same strength as SHA-1 and is negligibly weaker than SHA-512. But all three of these are equally weak when it comes to brute forcing rainbow tables. So it's vulnerable to rainbow tables and brute forcing. Still bad, though, is if we add a salt. The reason is all three algorithms are incredibly, incredibly fast. They're designed for not for storage. They're designed for things like signatures where you're processing lots and lots and lots of data, and they have to be fast. And the reason, that's the reason why it's vulnerable to brute forcing. So the best case is use a slow algorithm. PHP starting from 5.0 comes with crypt. Crypt is a C library um, that does bcrypt, does a couple different algorithms. I highly recommend using bcrypt. Another valid is the standard PBKDF2 method, which basically takes a primitive hash and iterates over it a lot. Um, it's NIST approved, which is the US um, agency that does security um, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. They basically approve algorithms for use in the US government. PBKDF2 is approved for password storage by the NAST, so I would definitely recommend using that. Starting in 5.5, we introduced this new function called password underscore hash, which you just pass in a password and you tell it what algorithm to use. Um, I'll go over that a little bit more later. And then a couple other libraries, password lib, which is one that I maintain, and PHPS, which is one that uh, is maintained somewhere else. I'll give you links to these in a little bit. What's dollar i? Is that dollar i is the iteration count. So I might get to, into that in the cost parameter. Um, you want to target a password hash for about a quarter of a second. Um, sometimes you'll want it a little bit faster if you're doing incredibly high volumes of password hashes. But typically, a quarter of a second is, that is slow enough to deter brute forcing but fast enough to not interfere with your web application. But make it as slow as you can afford to make it. If you're dealing with incredibly sensitive information, make it a second, make it five seconds. Um, the only thing that you have to trade off is your server CPU. So it really is dependent upon what you're doing. And it also depends on hardware. The cost setting that I use on my uh, quad Xeon boxes may be a lot slower than the ones you may use on a shared host maybe a lot faster. So the same cost setting won't um, necessarily reduce this, produce the same runtime on this very hardware. So basically the rule is test it. So good defaults for bcrypt, I find 10 is actually a very good default on most hardware and that's actually the default cost that PHP 5.5 is shipping with. And bcrypt 10,000 iterations. So basically that means is if we run uh, PDKDF2 with MD5 as the primitive, it'll run MD5 10,000 times. So demo time, I promise you that. So I basically created a password, uh, a set of password hashes using multiple algorithms for these four passwords. Foobar, lowercase foo, lowercase fo0, and 3d dollar sign. Weak, weak, weak passwords, right? So that's not going to do anything. So that slash John. I'm using a program called John the Ripper. Um, there's basically two main password hashing program, uh, brute forcing programs that I would use, John the Ripper and Hashpad. John the Ripper is basically an intelligent algorithm uh, for attacking passwords. It looks at the way common passwords are, are constructed. 
and tries to attack them based on that. Um, Hashcat does iterative brute forcing and a couple other different modes, and they're both really useful depending on how you want to crack something. So if I just do, I have them listed out in different. So I want to do John MD5. With, and it doesn't matter. Um, so right now it's actively cracking those three passwords. It's iterating through um, and is actually doing the attack. Now these are non-salted MD5s. So you see we cracked all four of those passwords in nine seconds. If my CPU wasn't being beat up by another tab, which I'll show you in a minute, it would do this in about two and a half seconds. So now if we go back, let's say we want to do salted MD5. With, a, with unique salts per hash. If you notice, we instantly found those first two cases. It's incredibly fast. This will take, my guess is around 15 to 20 seconds to execute. So MD5 is, with the salt is just about as broken as MD5 without a salt. Don't use it yet. Yeah, 15 seconds to attack those four passwords. Now, I mentioned that um, my CPU is burning. If I had tried this on bcrypt with four as the cost primer, which is the minimum, it takes about two and a half days. I ran that earlier in the week. Now, I started this last Sunday attacking um, bcrypt with a 10. So this has been running for a grand total of five days, 19 hours, 12 minutes, and 23 seconds. And I've actually cracked three of the four passwords already. It took three, it took two, over two and a half days to crack the second password. So these are what we normally would consider incredibly, incredibly, incredibly weak passwords. A three character password no one in the right mind would use. But notice that if you're using bcrypt with a appropriate cost setting, it actually is fairly secure. I wouldn't recommend using a three-character three pass, password, but it defeats most brute forcing attempts. And I'm going to let this run until it actually runs out, but I'm curious on how long it'll take. So in 5.5, we introduced this notion of simplified password hashing. Time is up, but I'll run through this really quickly. Um, the new API is password underscore hash, which generates a hash. Um, using a secure algorithm. Now, we only support two al one algorithm right now, which is bcrypt. As more secure algorithms get a bit become available, we will add them to that. But the point is, it should never produce an insecure output. So that's why we only support bcrypt. There's a separate method for password verify where you pass in the password and the existing hash, and it returns a balloon. The reason it's a second um, password, a second, a second function, is we do timing attack prevention in here. Uh, which is a completely different talk, completely different topic, but use verify, don't use equals equals. And I should also mention password hash generates a random salt for every single password. There's also a function for determining if a hash needs to be rehashed. So if you update and you say that, okay, I was using cost parameter 10 for bcrypt, but now I want to use 11, you change it in your code, when someone logs in, you run needs rehash on it, it'll look at it and say, yep, we need to rehash this password because it was in 10, now it's 11. So it gives you the opportunity to do that. And then finally, password get info, which basically returns the information you passed in the password hash to generate it. Basically just a utility function. And that's it, four simple API calls. So an example is you have function register, you hash the password with one line, and you store it. When you log in, you get the hash, however you want to get it. If it verifies, <coughs> and if it needs rehashing, you rehash it and store it and update your user. Otherwise, you're logged in. And if it returned, if password verify returns false, you're not logged in. Really, we aim to be as simple as possible. A lot of people ask, well, why isn't it a class? Why isn't it an object? Why isn't it a series of objects? Why isn't it this? Why isn't that? The point is, I want proper password hashing to be as easy as using MD5 password. That way, no one can make the excuse, it was too hard to do. Yeah, you may make the excuse I didn't know, which is one problem. 
but if you know this is as easy as MD5. So some resources that you can go to for more information. The PHP 5.5 API is available at wiki.php.net. Um, I'm currently, last night I was doing the last bug fixes before I push it in. So as soon as I test it and make sure that those bug fixes are good, I'm gonna actually push it into PHP trunk and you'll be able to download and play with it with nightly builds. Password Compat, it's a uh, compatibility library for 5.5, exposes the identical API but done with pure PHP code. I'm maintaining that at GitHub. It works for PHP 5.3 and newer. 5.3.7 and newer, to be exact. Password Lib is a password hashing library that I maintain. Um, and the reason that these two are different is they have two different goals. Password Compat is goal is simple, strong hashing. Password lib is meant more for compatibility cases where, let's say you have Dru a Drupal system, a, no a PHP custom system, and a Python system that all have to use the same passwords. Password lib supports multiple algorithms out of the box. So you can say, hash this password using Drupal's format, or verify this one using Joomla's MD5, and it's plug and play, and it'll, it picks the right strategy based on what you're asking for. It's fully object-oriented and extendable to whatever you need. The other one um, that's available on GitHub, PHP S or PHP Pass or PHP Pass or however you want to pronounce it. I think it's a horrible name. Different stories. This is the only other secure library that I would recommend. It works with PHP 4 plus um, and it's available at OpenWorld. If you have 5.3.7 or newer, don't use PHP S. Use either password compat or password loop. The reason is PHPS uses a older MD5 based iterative hash. It's good if you don't have 5.3 or newer. If you have 5.3 or newer, bcrypt is a thousand times better. Use bcrypt and preferably use a, one of the two libraries to do that. Um, but if you're stuck on 5.2 for some reason or you're stuck on an earlier version of 5.3, use PHPS from OpenWall. There's a couple of them on GitHub. They are not the same library. I would not recommend them. So, questions? Yes? Uh, Some framework 2 has their new crypt uh, component. Uh, I've just taken a quick look and it's using bcrypt, etc. Um, have you looked into seeing that? or? I haven't dug too deep into that one particularly. If it's using bcrypt, then it's chances are it's pretty good unless it's doing something funky with the solve generation. It's not... Using crypt isn't that difficult, the crypt library. The reason we built password hash on top of it is there's a lot of error state checking and things like that that go on in it. Um, but I'll definitely put that on my list to review um, and either submit vulnerabilities if there are them or um, doing it better. But if it's using decrypt, chances are very good that it's, it's strong enough as is.